Here we go with the last module, Implement Information Governance. While this is the smallest section, it's still almost a third, 25 to 30%. So let's break this down. Subsections, there are three. Configure retention policies and labels. Got three bullets there. Manage data retention in Microsoft 365. Seven, seven bullets. So that's twice as big. Uh, more than twice as big as the first one. And the third section, implement records management in Microsoft 365. And again, seven bullets in there for a topic. So configure retention policies, label smallest section, manage data retention, implement records management. Those are your bigger focus areas. So that's how I do. I break it down and look at how many bullets, what the percentage is, and that kind of gives me level of effort, where I want to put that effort when I'm studying and looking over topics. Retention labels help you retain what you need and delete what you don't at the item level. And what we mean by that is at the document or email. They are also used to declare an item as a record as part of records management solution for your Microsoft 365 data making retention labels available to people in your organization so they can classify content is a two-step process. One, create the retention labels, and two, publish the retention labels by using a retention label policy. To start this process, first create your retention labels in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center. Then create a label policy to make the labels available to apply in your apps. When you create and configure retention labels, depend on whether you're using records management or not. After you create labels, then you can publish retention labels so that they can be applied by users and apps such as SharePoint and Outlook. To learn this step-by-step -step procedure, make sure to review the configure retention policies and apply them in apps doc noted in the aka.ms se-400 study guide blog post of links. Use a retention policy to manage the data for your organization by deciding proactively whether to retain content, delete content, or retain and then delete content. A retention policy lets you do this very efficiently by assigning the same retention settings at the container level to be automatically inherited by content in that container. For example, all items in SharePoint sites or all email messages in users exchange mailboxes, all channel messages for teams that are used within the Microsoft Teams. If you're not sure whether to use a retention policy at the container level or a retention label at the item level, make sure to look at the document in the blog called Retention Policies and Retention Labels. Members of your compliance team who will create and manage retention policies and retention labels need permission to the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center. Again, by default, guess who's got rights? The tenant admin, also known as the global administrator, has access to this location and can give compliance officers and other people access without giving them all the permissions of a tenant admin. To grant permissions for this limited administration, we recommend that you add users to the compliance administrator admin role group. Alternatively to using this default rule, you can create a new role group and then add retention management role to this group. If you want a read-only role, good one to have, use view-only retention management. One of the most powerful features of retention labels is the ability to apply them automatically to content that matches specified conditions. In this case, people in your organization don't need to apply the retention labels. Microsoft 365 does the work for them. Auto-applying retention labels are powerful because you don't need to train your users on all your classifications. You don't need to rely on users to classify all content correctly. Users no longer need to know about data governance policies. They can focus on the work. So you can apply retention labels to content automatically when that content contains sensitive information, keywords, or searchable properties, or a match for trainable classifiers, as we talked about earlier. The process to automatically apply a retention label based on these conditions 
is displayed in the graphics shown right now. So this may be a good time to pause the video and review them. Retention policies can be applied to Exchange email, SharePoint sites, OneDrive accounts, Microsoft Teams, and more. But for this exam, the ones I just mentioned are where you should focus your studying. You can very efficiently apply a single policy to multiple locations or to specific locations or users. For the start of the retention period, you can choose when the content was created or supported only for files and the SharePoint, OneDrive, and Microsoft 365 group locations when the content was last modified. Items inherit retention settings from their container specified in the retention policy. If they are then moved outside that container when the policy is configured to retain content, a copy of that item is retained in the workload's secured location. However, the retention settings don't travel with the content in its new location. If that's required, use retention labels instead of retention policies. Items in SharePoint that have standard retention label, which doesn't declare the item to be a record, don't need the preservation hold library because these items remain in their original location. SharePoint prevents users from deleting items when the applied retention label is configured to retain the content, and SharePoint versioning preserves older versions when items are edited. But for other scenarios, the preservation hold library is used when the items must be retained such as items in OneDrive that have standard retention labels, items in SharePoint or OneDrive that have retention labels that declares them a record, and the item is unlocked for editing, items that are subject to retention policies. After retention settings are assigned to content in a OneDrive account or SharePoint site, the path the content takes depends on whether the retention settings are to retain and delete, to retain only, or delete only. Microsoft Teams chats messages and channel messages can be deleted by using retention policies for Teams. And in addition to the text in the messages, the following items can be retained for compliance reasons. Things like embedded images, tables, hypertext links, links to other Teams messages and files, and card content. Chat messages include all the names of the people in the chat, and channel messages include the team name and the message titled if supplied. Team messages and private channels are currently not supported for retention policies. Code snippets, recorded voice memos from the team's mobile client, thumbnails, announcement images, and reactions from others in the form of emoticons are not retained when you use the retention policy for teams sad face. Emails and files that you use with Teams aren't included in retention policies for Teams. These items have their own retention policies, which we'll cover shortly. The following exchange items from user mailboxes and shared mailboxes can be retained and deleted by using retention policies and retention labels. Mail messages, which includes received messages, drafts, sent messages, with any attachments, tasks when they have an end date, and notes. Calendar items that have an end date are supported for retention policies but aren't supported for retention labels. Contacts and any tasks and calendar items that don't have an end date are not supported. Other items stored in a mailbox such as Skype and team messages aren't included in retention policies or labels for exchange. These items also have their own retention policies. There are two types of holds available in Exchange Server, litigation hold and in-place hold. Litigation hold uses the litigation hold enabled property of a mailbox. When litigation hold is enabled, all mailbox, all items are placed on hold. In contrast, you can use an in-place hold to preserve only those items that meet the criteria of a search query that you define by using the in-place e-discovery tool. You can place multiple in-place holds on a mailbox, but litigation hold is either enabled or disabled for a mailbox. For both types of holds, you can also specify the duration period to hold items. The duration is calculated from the date a mailbox item is received or created. If a duration isn't set, 
items are held indefinitely or until the hold is removed. If you remove a litigation hold from a mailbox, but one or more in-place holds are still placed in the mailbox, items matching the in-place hold criteria are held for the period specified in the hold settings. In Microsoft 365, admins can create an archiving and deletion policy that automatically moves items to a user's archive mailbox and automatically deletes items from the mailbox. The admin does this by creating a retention policy that's assigned to mailboxes and moves items to a user's archive mailbox after a certain period of time, and that also deletes items from the mailbox after they reach a certain age limit. The actual rules that determine what items are moved or deleted and when that happens are called retention tags. Retention tags are linked to a retention policy that in turn is assigned to a user's mailbox. A retention tag applies retention settings to individual messages and folders in a user's mailbox. It defines how long a message remains in the mailbox and what action is taken when the message reaches the specified retention age. When a message reaches its retention age, it's either moved to the user's archive mailbox or it's deleted. To review the steps on how to do this, make sure again to review the related article on the study guide in the bottom corner of the page. There are many capabilities to support your records management solution in Microsoft 365. We'll cover some of these as they relate to the exam objectives. Label content as a record. You could create and configure retention labels to mark content as a record that can then be applied by users or automatically applied by identifying sensitive information keyword or content types. When content is declared a record, restrictions are placed on the item in terms of what actions are allowed or blocked. Additional activities about the items are also logged and you have proof of disposition when the items are deleted at the end of their retention period. Use retention labels to mark content as a record or regulatory record. You can either publish those labels so that users and administrators can manually apply them to content or auto apply those labels to content that you want to mark as a record or regulatory record. Migrate and manage your retention requirements with file plan. Although you can create and manage retention labels from information governments in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center, file plan from records management has additional management capabilities. You can bulk create retention labels by importing the relevant information from a spreadsheet. You can export the information from existing retention labels for analysis and offline collaboration or for bulk editing. More information about the retention labels is displayed to make it easier to see into and across the settings of all your retention labels from one view. File plan descriptors support additional and optional information for each label. Start different retention periods when an event occurs with event-based retention. When you retain content, the retention period is often based on the age of the content. For example, you might retain documents for seven years after they're created and then delete them. But when you configure retention labels, you can also base a retention period on when a specific type of event occurs. The event triggers the start of the retention period and all content with a retention label applied for that type of event gets the labels retention actions enforced on them. Some examples uh, for using event-based retention include employees leaving the organization, you have a contract expiration, or there's a product lifetime expiring. At this point, you may want to pause the video and review the graphic and or to review the documentation provided in the study guide for this section to understand the steps on how to set up event-driven retention. By using a file plan, you can bring in an existing retention plan to Microsoft 365 or build a new one for enhanced management capabilities. Depending on the organization structure of your records management solution, you can activate in-place records management at the site collection level, and you can further disable manual declaration of records at the list or library level. The default for list and libraries, however, is enabled when the feature is activated at the site collection level. Again, for the step-by-step -step how to document, you know where to go. Go to the study guide and you'll find this link near the very bottom of the blog. 
One key prerequisite to note, if it wasn't already done in SharePoint, you do need to activate in place records management in the SharePoint site settings before you can do any of these tasks. There you have it. You can go back and review any of these sections as needed. And I think you might, I may go back and review them because there's a lot of little details here. And for further studying all the links that I use to create this outline and content shared with you, of course, one more time, they can be found at the blog, aka.ms slash sc-400 study guide. Also at the beginning of that blog, I walk you through the process like I did in the first video about how I created these sessions, which is the same way I prepare for the exam. So in effect, I've done half the work for you and now you don't have to do it. But it's just like preparing for running it for a marathon. I can give you all the resources, all the training plans you need, but you got to get your foot out the door. So congratulations if you've come this far. The only thing else you may need to do is study a little bit more on areas that you're not as strong in. And for that, you have the blogger resources or just replay the sections that you need help with. With that, I hope you've booked your exam, right? What do you got to lose? Go ahead and give it a try. If you're interested in some of the other Azure or M365 exams, check them all out at https colon whack whack aka dot ms slash youtube slash cert. Also, by subscribing, you will get notified of the other exams we are planning on later this year. For example, we're going to be looking at the Azure data and AI exams and possibly some dynamics exams, maybe SAP. Got to find someone for that. So finally, please share and like this YouTube channel with anyone else that needs to get ready just a little bit faster and better with our CERT sessions. And finally, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for watching, subscribing, and sharing out our CERT sessions.